Well, welcome to Wild Goose Adventures. This is a pretty exciting day for me. I have just come back from the boat show down at Sanctuary Cove and I've come away with this little puppy. Now, just as a bit of transparency, I'm not being paid for this. I've paid for the dinghy myself. But I just wanted to maybe show you the dinghy that I chose and give you a bit of a rundown and why I chose it. Let's have a look, shall we? Got the old trusty old keys. Now, Jiggies, for me, have always been a little bit of compromise. A bit like outboard motors, that you you want the biggest dinghy you can so that you can stay as dry as you can and carry things, but the bigger they come, normally the heavier, the heavier they are, the more awkward they are to deal with, and basically, in an ideal world, you want the smallest dinghy you want. So, there we go. My solution has been this. This is a uh, what they call a rigid floored inflatable. So what it means is that that is what it packs up to. It weighs about 30 kilos all up. So it's reasonably light, it means I can put it on deck, I can roll it up and put it away when I'm traveling. But as you'll see in a minute, it uh, when it comes, when it's inflated, it's got a hard floor, keeps you dry, and it's fairly large and easy if you really need to tow it. floor Bores and Rolics now, Inflatables are notoriously hard to paddle and they, by nature they have a fair bit of windage so you don't really want to be carrying them too far Outboard motors are so much better but they are easy enough to tow the pump and that Here's the size and weight of the dinghy. As you can see, it's nice and small, very compact, very manageable. Let's have a look, shall we? There's a whole heap of brands on the market. There's a hot, you can get a whole heap of different ones. I guess the uh, most common one you'll hear is Zodiac. This one is not a Zodiac, this is a Highfield. And Highfield, I chose this for several reasons. First up, it's the lightest dinghy on the market. So that makes a lot of difference when you're trying to pick it up and carry it around and do all the things you've got to do. Made of uh, good German PVC. So it's uh, very well, very tough. And good for when you have got to drag it across things. And most importantly, probably, well, one of them, certainly one of the most important things is that uh, the seams are welded, they're not glued, so it makes it a much tougher construction, much more forgiving in heat, because what can happen is you blow them up and if you overinflate them and you do things with them, and because you want them as inflated as you can to make it as rigid as you can. When the hot air, in, especially here in tropical Queensland, it, uh, they expand and you've got to be careful of them blowing out. The next part of this is that all of my dinghies have traditionally had wooden transoms. And the wood tends to rot away, it's very heavy. This one is an aluminium transom, so it's a bit lighter. Certainly a lot more durable, and the ant's pants. It does come in a couple of different colours. 
but I selected white because predominantly white is easy to see and also it's reflective so it's not going to absorb the heat for the aforementioned problem that you can get of them uh, heating up and over inflating and maybe bursting. I'm going to pump it up, I'll see you in a couple of minutes. One of the other things that I think is really important in a dinghy and that is to have a V keel and that means when you put the motor on it and when you're rowing it that it tends to, because of the V it means that it will track, it will turn rather than just slide. Not all of these uh, inflatables, inflatables have that. I'll show you what I mean. You see the, inflate, the V in the bottom here? That means that it will track, it also just helps part the water, makes it a bit more efficient. Oh, look at the seat too. The seat is plastic, which is awesome. Gives a lot of stability. And it means that... I should be able to just... Rule, I think one is that you actually put it in before you fully inflate the boat. There we go. So there's your seat. It's light, plastic, drink holder, and I'll show you something more about that soon. Let's pump up the rest of the dinghy. The pump that you get is actually got uh, a high pressure system as well. So you pump the rest of it up. It says that uh, you should only have three bar, and then you pump the bottom up hard. No measurement to say what three bar is, but uh, it's fairly firm. We'll see how we go. Our high field dinghy, all inflated, ready to go. And to give you an idea of weight, that's it. So here we are out in the water, going to give this high field a bit of a uh, test run. There's a few things that come out first up is the bung. Most bungs on dinghies I've found have been on the outside, so to get to them to let any water out you've got to basically lift a bit of the engine up, you've got to reach over the back, pull it up and then do something with the bung. Then you empty it out and then put it back in and away you can go again. This dinghy, the Highfield, has a bung that's on actually on the inside. It's got a one-way valve so that uh, it can't let water back in. It means that you can release the water from inside, just being able to let it out and then put it back in without any of that issue of having to reach over behind that I've had on other dinghies. And this, the other one is this uh, inflatable floor. We talk about a lot about the inflatable floors and why they're so good and even in my old dinghy that had, an in, that had a hard floor but it didn't, wasn't a removal one is that when every time you get into a dinghy you end up with water on your feet, a little bit of spray, just bits and pieces and that always ends up in the bottom which means you and your gear is always ending up with wet feet. Having the inflatable bottom means that it is, you're raised from the actual floor and it's like a bit of a false floor that you get in some of the ribs. And of course the big advantage you have with a, a light dinghy, this one is 2.8 metres long, so I believe that it's going to get me able to get me up on the plane and because it's so light, you're going to be able to plane fairly easily. Now I weigh just over 90 kilos, so I'm hoping it's going to plane with me but there's also a chance that uh, I might be able to get it to plane with just a little bit of gear in it as well. For today's exercise and for the first time, basically it's just me, nothing else. So let's give it a go and see how it planes.
we've got it started that's the first bit let's get it into gear let's see how we go shall we Well, we've been for a little spin and now it's time to bring the dinghy aboard and this is one of the advantages of having a very light dinghy. Having removed the lifelines, I can just do this. And there we have it, the dinghies are safe and sound on board. Good for overnight, means that I can now deal with it if I want to pack it up completely for an extended sail. One of the other things that is necessary is I've attached a line, which on a dinghy is called a painter from old French peignoir, which basically means hanging, so like hanging clothes. I don't know how they came to that from a boat, but anyway, that's what it's called. I've attached it, it comes with two points here on the bow, one on either side, so that I can uh, so that it can tow in a straight line. I always attach the second line, which in this, in this case is at the back, and I just run it forward um, so that I've got an extra secure point. The other thing I'd like to bring up is the line itself. <clears throat> People ask me how long a line should be, and technically they, the general rule is about the length of the dinghy, and hopefully that it's not long enough to go underneath the motor and get caught around the prop if, uh, if it should fall over the side. I like mine a lot longer than that because when I want to tow, I want to tow it a fair way behind me. So I've, this <coughs> line is about oh, probably five metres long. So on a two, three metre dinghy, that's obviously a lot longer than the length of the dinghy, but that's okay. The other part about it is that I always make mine a floating rope. Now, if you attach a, a sinking rope, which a lot of people, the easiest thing to do is to grab an old sheet, uh, an old braided line, which tends to sink. And what happens then is that because it sinks, if you're on the boat and your yacht and you t reverse back or a dinghy just gets tied around like they do, and that line goes around and you start the prop, the chances are that that line is going to end up wrapped around your propeller and your shaft which isn't a fun thing to do and trust me I know that that's happened I've seen that done a lot so I always just use you can get silver rope you can get lots of lines but make sure it's a line that floats so that you don't have that issue of it running foul of your running gear while you're motoring well I hope you've enjoyed the unboxing ceremony of the Highfield. I really love the dinghy. It's an investment that I'm so pleased I've made. Next time we're going to take it a little bit further afield. thought we might go down to Harvey Bay and uh, check out some whales and just go and explore some of the beautiful Great Sandy Straits. Until then, give it a like if you've uh, enjoyed the show. Subscribe, that'll be much appreciated. And until next time, smooth sailing.